The first one, the hook I'm using is a 1X heavy. It's a must add hook. It's got a 1X heavy wire, standard length but 1X heavy. Or is it 1X or 2X? 2X. What that, mean, what that means is that the, the hook wire is the same for a, a hook two, two times larger. So this is a 12, so it has the same wire size as an 8. And we want this to sink. Optionally, you could put um, lead substitute on. And I've got some here, but I'm not going to put it on tonight. Um, it depends on how fast the water's flowing, whether you want to weight it or not. If it's relatively quick, if you're fishing in the bow, you want to cover the hook shank three or four times with lead. <laughs> Just to get it down. Um, not many people realize that the bow in downtown Calgary is at eight miles an hour. So it's flowing pretty quickly. You can use either tan, uh, eight dot thread is what I use for, for just about anything or an olive. And I'm going to tie it with tan because I'm going to throw some tan dubbing on here. Starting at the front as usual, giving room. Cover the hook. Start with a naked hook so we'll dress it. And I tend to wrap quite a ways back to make sure it's going to stay there. And then I'm going to take it back in here so that when I'm finished that the thread hangs about where the barb is. This and LaFontaine? Pardon? Is this LaFontaine? No, this is, uh, I'm not sure where this one came from. Um, I got it off a Caddis Life Cycle DVD from Leroy Hyatt and Carol Carolyn Sells is where I got this from. The next thing I'm going to do on here, and we have a choice, you can just put a dubbing on here because what I'm going to try and do is imitate the caddis and what they, the larva does is uses its own saliva to glue sticks and rocks and bits of muck and stuff from the bottom all over its body and on the back end of the larva there are two hooks so that what it does is it holds itself in with these two hooks when it's ready to pupate it lets go and drifts out um, the Americans call the little shells that they find on the shore periwinkles and believe it or not, there are fly tires in the United States and probably in Canada that are taking little Dremel drills and drilling holes in the periwinkles so that they can put the hook inside and then fill it full of epoxy or superglue to glue the hook into an existing real life caddis. Well, I, no thanks, I'm not going there. That's way too much work. Okay, now. I said use your cheap hackles, and I weren't kidding. These are Indian capes. I've had them since before my children were born. And my oldest son is 30. <laughs> so I've had these a long time. You don't um, tie enough flies, Dave. Pardon? You don't tie enough flies. No, I found better materials. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tie on just because I'm going to trim it, I really don't care where it comes from on this neck because I'm going to hack the heck out of it when I'm done. We'll grab one feather and trim it off so they get rid of the, as Carolyn sells those, get rid of the fuzzies on the back. Then I'm going to tie it in, first one on the far side, with the curve away. The hook feather curves, so I'm going to put it so it curves away from me. And this one is a relatively easy fly to put together. It doesn't take long. It's not even any real challenge for me after sitting around doing nothing for so long. I just grab a different color. Um, this one happens to be kind of badger colored. It's got the dark, dark stripe in the middle. Okay, so really inexpensive. I think when I bought these things in 1970, <coughs> I um, <laughs> I paid about $4 for a dozen of these things or something like that from a company in Ontario that doesn't exist anymore, Angling Specialties in Ancaster, Ontario. Some of us may remember that company. And this one I'm curving so the, hook, the feathers curve towards me. Um, what it does is it gives a little bit spikier appearance to the when we wrap it 
So we've got the hackles tied on there. Now I'm going to take some, this is Whitlock's mix I got in here, just some tan color dubbing. And um, as Carolyn Sells was saying when she was tying this thing, she said she wanted it plump. <laughs> so try not to overcoat the dubbing on the thread. Basically you want a fuzzy thread to do this and I may have to put this on here more than once because I got I have to try to build up a bit of a taper without using too much dubbing on the thread at one time. So we build up a bit of a taper. This has got a little bit of sparkle in it which is okay because what we're trying to imitate is this thing on the bottom and if the sparkle shows through that's all right too. Right, because it's basically we're trying to get the cased caddis and they build cases and uh, one of the things that was mentioned on the video is that uh, chemists are investigating the saliva of caddis larva because they found it's one of the strongest glues they've ever come into. They're trying to synthesize it. They can't believe how strong this glue is. And I guess if you're gluing little rocks to your body you don't want them to come off. <laughs> So that's basically the hard part of the fly done. The next is the part where using cheap feathers it becomes a challenge. Trying to wrap these relatively close together, remembering that it's an Indian neck so the hackles aren't all that long. And I really don't care that this is about 18 times oversized for the hook. Because at this point, as long as I'm getting barbules sticking out of the hook, I'm winning. Tie it down with a couple of turns. Throw that in there for the garbage can caddis later. Garbage can caddis is basically you take everything in your bag, your throwaway bag, toss it in the coffee grinder, grind it all up and uh, turn it into dubbing. And when you dub a caddis from it, you get this spiky looking thing. So I'll put a quick finish on here. And then trim. Now trimming on this thing, Carolyn said it should be fat on the front, skinny on the back, and I really don't care. I think if it's horizontal, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna cheat a little, and since I'm a shaky old man, I've got to Use both you hands to, to do the trim. Right? Pardon? You used to trim your own beard. No, I don't trim my own beard. I'd lose nostrils. I'd open up nostrils that way. Mm. That's the only reason I got a mustache is because I can't trim my mustache without carving up my face. And you trim it down till you think you're done. I'm going to trim these off because there's going to be no tails on this. things off the front. There we go. Nice and fuzzy. And that's it. <laughs>